Make a motion. We come out of closed session. <laughs> second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. How's that? <clears throat> Back in session, uh, first thing is uh, invocation by uh, Pastor Ron Boyer from the New Mali Baptist Church. Welcome and we appreciate you being here. And then uh, following, I'll lead you all in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise, take off your hat. Thank you. Our Father and our God, as we come before you tonight before, and before this honorable council, mindful of when Moses led the people of Israel, and he says, how can I bear you and your strife? And thus you gave us the structures of government and the delegation of authority and the ability to judge impartially. And we pray tonight for that wisdom in this body tonight as the people, the good people of St. Charles come to bring the issues of government before this council tonight, we pray that you will give them wisdom, you'll give them clarity of mind and conviction of heart to govern in the best interest of the good people of St. Charles, Lord. That uh, in the face of all the conflict we have in politics today, we pray that everything we do here tonight will be done in decency and order with civility and uh, in humility, Lord. Even though we may disagree on issues, we can still walk away as friends. And we pray your presence, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any speakers? Oh, we, did we call the roll? Oh, did we call it? Yeah, we called We the did not before. call the roll for this meeting. Okay. Councilmember Joe Cronin? Here. Councilmember Joe Brazel? Here. Councilmember Mike Elam? Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond? Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander? Here. Councilmember Mike Klinghammer? Here. Councilmember John White? Here. Now, public comment. Uh, our first speaker is Mike Specka. Good evening. I'm here to speak about the recommendation uh, against the recommendation on the bill 4619 of not adding a stop sign um, to the Mason Grove Drive in St. Charles. Um, please put yourself in my shoes. We've lived in Mason Grove a little over a year. In that time, we've wit we witnessed a family almost get hit while trick-or-treating last Halloween night. As we were pulling into our driveway, we almost got rear-ended from a car going over the speed limit. It was suggested that, with, through the, uh, the engineer, it was suggested that we work with our homeowners association to address the concerns and behaviors of the drivers on our street. Every year, a letter goes out to the drivers reminding them to take down their Christmas lights, put it in their trash cans, and go 25 miles an hour. We see that every year. Um, this neighborhood-centric message only hits the adults who manage to read the letter and does not filter down, uh, filter down to the teenage drivers in the neighborhood. The message also does not reach the drivers that filter through the neighborhood that are going above the speed limit. For example, FedEx, UPS, garbage trucks, and even school buses are flying up and down our street. Um, it was also in suggested that we increase law enforcement in the neighborhood. Since we've moved there, I've asked the police department twice on my own to incre increase patrols. Um, we also have had a radar sign installed in the neighborhood for a given time for about a week, week and a half. Um, you know, during that time when either the officers there or the street signs there, the, the radar guns there, people do slow down. But once that's gone, it goes right back to normal. Um, Sorry, I lost my spot. 
So what we're really asking is something to help disrupt the flow of traffic. We live on a street with a lot of young kids, a lot of families with pets, and people use it as a drag strip, especially late at night. You know, we can hear these people flying up and down the street at all speeds and really disregarding for the safety of the families that live there. It doesn't matter if we're out front, standing in the street, or talking to our neighbors. People continue to fly up and down the street. So we're just asking for some kind of help to really help control the flow of traffic here. If it's speed bumps that our neighbor or HOA needs to have installed or something, it's, it's just the Wild West. And when we go to address those neighbors, they either have some excuse that, well, they're running late for this and they're only going five miles over the speed limit. Five miles over the speed limit in a 25 mile zone is often really, really fast. So we're just asking, please, you know, please reconsider the uh, consideration of not having that stop Thank you, sign sir. added. The next speaker is Jill Specka. Hello. So this is uh, in regards to the same issue, putting a stop sign at 1325 uh, Mason Grove. So as a mom, I worry daily on a, I worry on a daily basis about the well-being of my children. I can't even let them play in the front yard without worrying about that they're going to get hit. The issue with Mason Grove is it doesn't matter if I'm out there watching watching them or watching the traffic. People continue to speed uh, in our subdivision. Uh, the presence of adults or people in the vicinity does does nothing to curb um, the speeding and carelessness of the drivers that are driving down Mason Grove. Again, when you confront the people driving fast, they always make excuses, whether they were late for a meeting or uh, just being careful not to make sure that no one, nobody was out in their yards. It was suggested that we ask for increased police presence in the neighborhood, which we have done on multiple occasions but it only slows traffic for uh, a short amount of time. We also have requested the use of radar signs to slow the traffic. Again, this worked for just a short amount of time. So please help us disrupt the flow of traffic down our street by either helping us to install a stop sign or helping us uh, do whatever it takes to get these people to slow down. Thank you. Thank you. Just so you know, I plan to have the county engineer come up and speak later on this issue. So. You may want to stick around for that. Kyle Graham. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I'm the youngest person on Mason Grove. Um, but we just moved in not too long ago, me and my wife. And um, one of the biggest issues we had was future-wise having kids. We do not have kids right now. Um, was the street before we even bought the house was we were concerned about how fast cars were driving we're pretty far up in um, where the cars drive by so that was an issue even before we bought the house and we just bought the house about a month and a half ago so um, even as my age you know we're thinking long term kids wise and everything um, it was an issue and we did not um, we did not like that when we bought the house, but um, we've met Mike and his wife and all them, and there are kids there. We do not have kids yet, but um, even me and my wife can see that, I mean, it, it's, it's an issue for young kids running around. Um, we're right by a cul-de-sac and um, with Fourth of July stuff, we, we saw the issue. So um, it was an issue for us, and I, th I think long-term wise, it, you know, when we have kids, that I, I would really like a stop sign there. Um, I mean, I'm obviously very young for this group, but um, I, I, I see the importance. So, thank you. Thank you. And the last speaker on another issue would be Arnie Dinoff. Thank you very much, members of the County Council, Arnie A.C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident. First thing on your agenda is the consent agenda, and it deals with library trustees. I 
gave my desire and my abilities and tenacity and assets and told my desire to both the Director of Administration, Ms. Lycom, and also the County Executive, Mr. Elming. Uh, my name doesn't appear there. So is it a constant uh, pay-to-play politics in our county? Do you have to pay a certain amount of money to be appointed to an office that doesn't pay anything to serve my community and care about my community to make it a better place to live and work? My assets and knowledge and ability are going to waste while I'm sitting on the sidelines and not serving the taxpayers. However, I will be at every county council meeting and every library board meeting. On the uh, pr uh, uh, primary ballot for August 7th is a surprise. I saw some signs, and you probably did, that went up in a lot of unscrupulous and illegal locations on MoDOT property throughout the county, uh, asking that you vote for a tax increase of a $70 million bond issue called Proposition Ambulance. We need to send a strong message of accountability to the ambulance district because we just, three years ago, passed a 59% 59 59 increase in property taxes. Enough is enough. Facts, responsibility, and transparency. We already have firefighter paramedics who respond to the scene, and we're paying a quarter additional in tax in the Wentzville, Cottleville, and O'Fallon Fire Protection District. So we need to have that accountability. I ask that voters vote no on Proposition Ambulance on August 7th. Um, let's see here. In reference to the five to four vote last meeting to rezone the 300 uh, acre or 300 home development uh, in the research park. Mr. County Executive, if you haven't already, veto this office awful and impeding ordinance. Mr. Elman, have some backbone and get some guts and veto the bill. We, the residents, rule. After the meeting, a couple county councilmen acted unprofessional and unethical. And I'm asking that the county police provide additional outside police protection and security, and also occur, uh, to make sure that everybody's rights are protected and that nobody is hurt in uh, decisions before the county council. I'm asking for a criminal investigation into assault and threats by Joe Cronin, County Councilman District 1. You call, we call ourselves as a police department now a professional agency to serve the public. Let's see if you can conduct an impartial, fair, and open investigation as Mr. Cronin threatened to kick my butt explicitive on the sidewalk. You asked me to, but I didn't. No, I didn't, sir. Yes. <laughs> uh, after the meeting, I stated to both Mr. Cronin and Mr. Brazel, hmm. money Thank buys you, Mr. Dean Hopp, power. Your time's up. I will continue at the next meeting. Thank you. No more comments, no more cards. Okay, we'll close public comment. Uh, next item is the uh, oral report for the county exec. Yeah, I would like uh, to yield my time to Chief Todd. He's got some uh, information about some things that are going on he wants you to know about. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. We received a uh, email from Mr. Brazel uh, the other day, and it, it hits home, and we're dealing with all the time, and we're addressing it on our public sites as well as the county site, the Miss Inger, but I think we need to get to the public also. We're getting scams constantly, and we want the citizens to know if you receive a phone call telling you you need to post bond, you need to pay a fine, or there's a warrant for your arrest, and you need to pay by, on the Internet by check or uh, credit card, we don't work like that, it doesn't work like that. So we urge citizens who receive such calls to notify or contact when in doubt their local police department. No police department operates like that, so contact your sheriff, contact your police department, uh, and we address these the best we can. The, the, our best response is uh, when we get a phone call such as this, we got from Mr. Brazel, but the public calls us and gives us a phone number, we immediately return the phone call. They hang up on us, I don't know why. <laughs> and when you call the number back, it's a dead phone. But unfortunately, there's enough citizens that pay that money that it works. So please, when in doubt, reach out to us, reach out to your elected officials, uh, and check with us directly. But we don't take credit cards over the phone or through the email. Thank you. Dave, did they call that number today? Did you call that number today? Yes, sir. It, it, would, it was dead when we identified ourselves. Oh, so they answered, and then they, you said who you were, and they disconnected? Uh, yes, it was uh, precinct so-and-so, and I identified myself as who I was. They hung up. Yeah. So, uh, and they're dead phones. So as soon as they hang up, you call it back. They've already, they've already trashed the phone. Uh, and again, they're probably nowhere in this region. They just get on these, but what they target the elderly 
who are, are confused because they'll talk about a grandchild or something and they don't necessarily know any different and they send the money. So thank yeah, you they, for your they, email. They called me and they said, I have two, Mr. Browns, you have two warrants for your arrest. You need immediate pay, oh, call this number. Some and I'm years. thinking, I could have two warrants for my arrest, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elman's quite clear, we do not take credit cards online to uh, pay for your warrants and fines. So thank you, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. And when in doubt, please, citizens, uh, contact your officials or contact us or any police department before you make that payment. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> okay, next item is consent agenda. Is there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Sorry. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? That carries. Next is uh, bills for final passage. Uh, Bill number 4616, would you Bill, please read? Surely. Bill number 4616, an ordinance amending the 2018 budget adopted as ordinance 17-113 by transferring unencumbered appropriations between line items in the circuit court capital projects fund. Any comments or questions on that? Hearing none, read it, call the roll. An ordinance amending the 2018 budget adopted as Ordinance 17-113 by transferring unencumbered appropriations between light items in the Circuit Court Capital Projects Fund. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. That bill passes. Moving on to Bill 4617. Bill number 4617, an ordinance amending the 2018 budget adopted by Ordinance 17-113 for positions within the St. Charles County Information Systems Department. Any comments or questions? Yes. I saw Simon here and I, I thanked him personally, but I thought I would say him publicly as well. That information letter that he sent out the, from his department called the BITE, if you want to read that, it gives you a really good update that I can even understand about all the changes and all the improvements he's making. And I thought I just wanted to call you out, Simon, because I think it helped me a lot. And if you guys haven't read it, you ought to probably read it. Anybody else? Please call, uh, read it and call the roll. An ordinance amending the 2018 budget adopted by Ordinance 17-113 for positions within the St. Charles County Information Systems Department. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. That bill passes. Moving on to bills for introduction. Bill 4618. Bill number 4618, requested by Michael Her Herbert, sponsored by Michael Klinghammer, an ordinance of the County of St. Charles, Missouri, approving the preliminary plat of Craig Boschert subdivision. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, let's move on to Bill 4619. Bill number 4619, request by Craig Tykowski, sponsored by Council as a whole, an ordinance establishing new traffic regulations and establishing penalties for violations thereof. Any comments? Yes, um, the uh, packet didn't have the second page of, uh, of the memo. It, it only has the first page, so it doesn't really get to the to the recommendations of staff. So that's exhibit A, which is behind the bill. Other, I, I, Craig, would would you mind coming up and? Uh, oh. Councilman, I have a copy here. If you'd like to look at it real quick, unless you do have it. Um, we can get it. We're not voting on it tonight, so it's just the summary ends in a with the following recommendations: colon and nothing's yeah, it's after. Yeah, all that. on the second page. If it's not there, then yes, you, you do not have it's, it. it. It's on the bill. Not it's on the bill, but it's not under the summary where yeah. one would normally look for the rest for the recommendation. I guess I my question for you is: uh, several people have spoke about a stop sign on. I'm not sure, Mason Grove? Grove, yes. I've got a map here if you'd like to, maybe if I can show this to yeah. kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here, if that will come on. 
Uh, let's see. Let's. Okay, this is the proper orientation. Mm -hmm. This is Cox Hill Road, and then the, the red lines are, are is the main red line coming off of Cox Hill is Mason Grove Drive itself. So you can see it's a self-contained uh, subdivision. There's no cut through traffic or, or anything like that that they have to contend with. The, the traffic that are on the streets are pretty much the residents themselves and visitors, delivery folks, like they said. Yeah. Can you point to that map where they were wanting a stop sign? Uh, it's generally just up in this vicinity right up here. As you can see, that would be a one spot along a pretty lengthy street there. Um, but that's generally the location of where the request was. Yes, Joe? We have double fine zones. Is that something we can do? Oh, I do not believe we do have double fine zones. That's never been established that I'm aware of. Okay, a lot of the cities in our in area, I know St. Peter's does, when they have a problem like these folks are experiencing, instead of putting a stop sign up that makes everybody have to slow down and take some longer to get to work or school or whatever, they do those double fine zones. And I think the result is similar to a stop sign. Everybody starts thinking a little bit, wow, I get a speed a ticket here. It's going to cost me instead of the normal $100, maybe a couple of hundred or more. So, I mean, is that something that there's any reason why we could not do that like those municipalities? We just have to pass an ordinance to that effect, would we? I would, I would think so. And then it would be up to law enforcement, of course, to, uh, to follow up on something like Chief, that. Chief, what's your opinion of those double fine zones? Do you think they help? Well, the double fines are fine and dandy, but like the folks have pointed out, we can't be everywhere. So if we're there for, and what we do, because there's so many requests and everybody, we target particular areas, we start having complaints, we'll target particular areas, and we'll be there for a while, as they said, we see that we're gone, and now we've moved on to another subdivision. So the double fines work great, so long as we're in the area, and we can do that, but once we're gone, it's just a sign. Now, you'd have to talk to St. Peter, to Craig, or whatever, how, how well they work, I can't speak to that. Uh, and we certainly feel everybody's pain because we get it, we're getting it from all over. Uh, the traffic trailer does get their attention, but again, once the traffic trailer is gone, uh, it's back to business as usual. It's been our experience. Most of the people we involve subdivisions, and it, for some advantage, it is drivers, but the residents, as they're pointed out. Yeah. Uh, we just went the other night and made contact with a particular resident for a different subdivision expressing our concerns to them and we'd be watching. But again, I can't speak to that sign directly, sir. Dave, um, Dave on the, the double signs, the double double fine signs, they're yes, like sir. all up and down 94. Who gives those double fines? If it's St. Peter's, I guess. No, no, and, and unincorporated out in Defiance, Augusta, it says. Uh, those, are on, those would be state, state if they're no, on no. state routes. We do not have any on unincorporated roadways. No, no, double no, no, no double fines. They don't exist. It doesn't <laughs> I was expecting the highway patrol. Yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much about this double fine stuff. I don't know if I really want to go there, but uh, the way I look at it, I mean, I don't have anybody coming up here speaking in opposition of the stop sign. Whose district is this? Is this yours? No, it's is John. It? I don't. I don't see why. If 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 it's a subdivision, cars are speeding through there. I don't see why you wouldn't want to put a stop sign there. I mean, I know you're trying to create just for the engineering the flow, but is there a reason why? What's the negative impact? Well, what what will happen? First of all, because there's no cross side streets, there's no intersecting streets there. It's just a straight street. So people coming down that street, oh, there's no okay. there's no intersection. So they're coming down the street and they're going to look and see. Well, there's a stop sign for one reason and one reason only. To inconvenience means make me stop. So after a while, they're going to ignore it because there's no chance for conflicting movement. There's no chance for an accident. You know, that's what stop signs are for. Stop signs are, are to uh, monitor conflicting movements and make sure that those can safely be negotiated. Um, the, other, the other issue is they will, they will stop right at that point, but as soon as they accelerate again, they're going to be right back to where they were farther down the street. So. You have it here, so then next month, then do we put another one 200 feet down the road and then another one another 200 feet down the road? They're really not effective for speed control. They're really not. They've never Well, if you're going to gonna break the law of speed, you're going to break the law of running a stop sign, too. I mean, and, and, and it becomes unsafe because you're, you're anticipating that a car is going to stop. So you may be not paying attention if you're out, you know, getting into your car or something, and he may blow right on through. He or she may blow right on, right on through. So, Craig, I have a question. If, if it's a speed control issue, which is what they've talked about, it's a speed control issue. Is there something else we can do on a long straightaway road like that? I mean, so I was out in Phoenix last week with my son. They put dips in there as opposed to the bumps. They put the little dips in there. They're not big dims, but if you're speeding, you'll feel it. 
Not that I was speeding, but I'm just saying, if you were, you could feel it. Is that something that we can do? Well, I would say the major concern with that is that we just don't have the funding to do that. I mean, okay. we have 700 miles of roads that we maintain. A lot of those are subdivision streets. If we, st we, we don't even have enough money now to replace all the bad concrete slabs that we have out there. My suggestion would be is that they, the subdivision form, because it is a self-contained unit, right. form a neighborhood improvement district and hire an engineer to, to, to design some traffic calming measures that you know, would work and then, you know, it would be up to the subdivision themselves then to, to pay for those improvements. So the subdivision could put something could, like they, that they in They certainly could. They get, get a permit from us as, as long as, you know, we reviewed the engineering on it. Um, it's no different than a sanitary sewer NID or, or some of the other things that we've done over time. They, we just don't have the revenues for that kind of program, okay. especially as widespread as, you know, the demands probably would be at some point. Okay. I get one. The... Uh, uh, Slowing down traffic has been something that's come up repeatedly for, you know, I've been in local government for 20 something years and it's the, the most repeated problem. And, um, and I agree with you putting stop signs where they don't really belong um, doesn't solve the problem. But there are other things that do. Um, narrowing of the road, um, there's, you can actually put barricades or you can design it so that it's gardens on either side and actually narrows the road down right those are what they call traffic calming measures those small work. roundabouts yep. uh, narrowing the road you know the other thing that helps is actually parking on the street actually forces that, people that's to slow exactly down. what we did in our neighborhood i, I live on a very wide um, straightaway um, going through a residential back then they built really wide streets we put between the neighbor and i we just park in a car on each side of the street one that we don't care about, uh, <laughs> and it, uh, it it works amazingly well. Um, cars are speeding, and then they slow down to get between the two cars. Right, and, and that's you know that they're both largely parked, um, and it, it works. It works very well. Go ahead. The problem with that, children pay no attention <laughs> to streets. We can put all the crosswalks. Kids are kids. They'll chase their dog, they'll chase their cat, they'll chase a ball. Their only defense is that driver paying attention. And it's been most of our time experience. It's a child running out in the street behind a car because the driver can't see them in time. Uh, that's right. just my only issue. If we, we lose the child, it doesn't make a difference whether it's 25 or 30. Uh, that's my only concern about it. The kids don't pay attention. Right. They're kids, and that's never going to change for the rest of humanity. Just a thought. Yep. Well, we could we could probably debate this okay. issue for quite a while. Go ahead, Joe. Does the county have one of those rumble strip machines like they use like on 79 and medians and stuff? You know that? No, we do not. Okay. Has anybody ever tried using those strips the opposite way instead of along the edges of the road but crossways? You know what I'm talking about? I don't. I know they they will use them in temporary situations uh, during in construction zones and things mm -hmm. of that nature. I don't know that I've seen them uh, permanently done that way. Uh, these are concrete streets, so they're not quite as easy to put in as they are okay. on asphalt. But they, you know, it can be done. Um, yeah, that other than that, you know, speed bumps. Those raise public safety concerns for me because if, if you're in an ambulance mm -hmm. and you're about ready to stick somebody or you're about to receive a stick and the ambulance goes over a speed bump, you know, now are we compromising people's safety plus the slow down response times and as far as, you know, snow plowing, just there's a lot of different things about speed bumps that aren't very, yeah. you know, uh, a, a good thing to use. But there's other traffic calming measures, <laughs> narrowing the roadway, putting the circles in, you know, some of those things that have been done similar to what mike was saying in ireland they just put two simple wood posts when you get to a town to narrow the road to get everybody then you can see the kids two posts they hit a post you break a post you put a new one in so i don't know it's just uh, i would you got something mike so you're dying so can you come up here real quick yeah i mean I, come up here so we can hear you oh. So, I'm watching you have a stroke there, and I, I feel bad for you. I, obviously, I'm new to this. Right. Come on up. I've got family that are policemen. Family Please come to the microphone. That's all right. Move up so you can get on TV. Yeah, yeah there you go. Hey, good to see you, Steve. <laughs> um, I've got family that are policemen, firemen. I mean, I understand. There's no way you can pay enough to get people everywhere. I've got family that are policemen and firemen. So, okay. like, they cannot be there. Policemen will not help our neighborhood there's no way because that's why we're trying to talk about other 
issues to help and you out. if yeah and then we're talking about how it's too expensive to have whatever the speed bumps and stuff i mean right. their stop signs are much cheaper i'm an accountant so the cheapest way possible <laughs> is the best way <laughs> but i mean a stop sign's got to be cheaper than speed bumps and things like that i don't and I, I don't see how it's that expensive. It's and not cost. It's not, it's not the cost. It's the effectiveness. It's effectiveness. So it's, we're not talking about a cost problem with your stop so sign. You your stop sign is the cheapest. What he's saying is since you don't have a cross street, people will pay attention when you first put it in. And I appreciate where you're going with this, but you're going to lose this one. So I'm just, I'm just telling you no, right I'm, now. I'm, so they're going to pay attention when you start. After a while, they're going to figure out there's not a cross street, to Craig's point, and they're going to... There's Stop a cul-de-sac right there. To it. There's not a where you're talking about putting it. There's a cul-de-sac there's, there's a cul -de -sac. right there. It's a bubble. It's not a street. So there's three. It, four there's a cul-de-sac right there, and this exact place I grew up in, as a little kid, same exact thing. There was a cul-de-sac, and there was a stop sign. Okay. The exact place I grew up in. Okay. Which thank was you. right down the street from that. I was. Yay, big one. Okay, this thank you. Was, thank you. I just no. wanted to give you an opportunity because you were no, you were that, stressing. Yeah, no, I, I, I a to, thank you. But to talk. yeah, <laughs> the same thing. It, it is a cul-de-sac, and there are no. all right perfect place for it. Thank so. you. What well, my feeling is, that these people want a stop sign there. It's it's a cheap solution. It's a cul-de-sac there. I would support putting in the stop sign. Of course, I need. I need uh, at least three other members of the county council to agree with me. When you say there's a stop uh, a cul-de-sac, is it is it like a half moon off the street? Well, it depends on exactly where he's talking about. There is a cul-de-sac farther up the street, closer to Cox Hill. But as you get down to where I believe the the, the 1325 is, is it's just a bubble in the street. There's not there's it's no not an actual there's not an actual street. It's just a little bit wider pavement that houses farm around the arc which further creates a problem because where do you put the stop sign coming from the other direction? It's going to have to be 100 feet away or so. So now you've got two offset stop signs that, again, is not something that typically gets, gets done in a situation like that. It almost creates a more of a hazard because it's kind of a false sense of security. I mean, that's, that's my concern. Well, did you put the, uh, that map back up sure. there again? What's John think about this? So, so the distance from... From Cox Hill back to that bubble is a lot further than 100 feet. Oh, yeah. It's, I don't know what it is. It's three, 400 feet probably. So. This is for. <laughs> is anybody else got any comments on this? Well, my only comment, I'm stuck in the middle here because the county engineer, you know, he's an expert on this. And uh, we rely on his expertise is whether we do it or we don't or we go you know we it's our prerogative to go ahead and put it in if we want to put it in he's just advising us yes right so if I, you know if i may um to get us out of this to make a recommendation you can install it temporarily for six months to see how it works uh, i don't think it will but it'll give them some peace of mind and they can see for themselves because once people see that they're not going to get correct, and they can see what well, we can't hide and make them accountable for it. They're going to drive like the drive in. It's usually going to be the resident. The EPS truck stuck. But my recommendation is put it in for six months to see how it works. But I'm not Craig, so I speak as a partner. I like that idea. Well, well thank you for your you know, if suggestion. Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to put the stop sign in. Well, well, this is just, just a, this is introduction. Just introduction so. Well, we could do it during introduction. We don't have to wait till the final. You can offer an amendment. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. If I have any other support on the council, I would I would like to do that. No, I for these Are folks. You, I like the chief. You side put idea. it for six months, or what'd you say? A temporary stop sign. I, I give, make a motion. We put a temporary stop sign in. Second that. Um, oh. Mr. Chairman, may I? May I just mention, I believe that the chief has power to put a, order a temporary stop sign in. Were, were you, chief, were you recommending that they delay the vote on the permanent um, and you would order one put in or? Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> 
Um, I'm not opposed to the temporary sign because uh, then the folks, you know, they'll get a little peace of mind of seeing, but they also see what we see. So they, we both realize we're each other, not the issue. So I would recommend that we put a, a temporary sign in to see how it works. So we get some feedback from the citizens. We'll keep an eye on it. And we also hear from the highway department. Well, I think Craig's point's good though. Where do you put it? Do you put it one at one exactly. end and have that? Well, the only other option would be to move it farther up to this larger cul-de-sac. Then there is actually an intersecting street. Makes so, a little bit more right, sense so from you a physical You could put it at 1317 as opposed to 1325. And 1317 is going to get you up closer. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? It would make more would sense if you put it well, up there. Yeah, it will, but the problem's going to be is that after they hit the stop sign, they're going to be sped back up by the time they get to yeah, 1325. Right. It, wherever you put the stop sign, the speeding will stop. Wherever there is not a stop sign, the speeding more than likely will continue. Well, let's let the, right. let's let the chief and the county engineer decide where to put it, and we'll table this bill until after six months to see where it goes. We'll just table this one section or this part. It's yeah. fine. I just I. I'm guilty myself of putting in stop signs in places that they don't belong. And I drive past those on my way home every day. And I see how many people don't stop. And exactly like Craig's talking about, the kids, they know the kid, that the cars aren't going to stop there now. Um, so it's, it's, it's creating, a, in my opinion, it creates a more dangerous situation than, than what's there currently. Um, I like the idea of, of putting some sort of, of, of road narrowing device, whether it be as simple as, simple as parked cars or, which I understand there's, there's issues, but some sort of, of, of uh, constriction to the lane. Slow, wide open streets encourages speeding. Stop signs is not the answer. Um, if, we, if we want to do something, we really should look at narrowing the road. And that can be done with barricades. The stop sign will not stop the speed. If that's what we're doing, that's... I, I understand. That's the best option. I don't, gentlemen, I don't disagree. Okay. Because yeah. I have a meeting here temporarily so the folks can see for themselves. Well, it's slow down the traffic in, in that oh, wow. particular area where the sign is, and that's... <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of people that do stop for stop signs. I stop for them, and, and hopefully a lot of people will slow down and stop at the stop sign or at least slow down and roll through it like you see a lot of people do but. so we i got a motion on the floor for a temporary stop sign and a second um, but, but it's not necessary because the chief can do it on his own i would suggest that we you amend this bill between now and next because there's other things in this particular bill other than just that stop sign right. so i would suggest that we amend this current bill and then bring that back for final approval in two weeks. Yep. Well, that's the with, with that in mind, I'll withdraw my second. If you want to withdraw your motion, I do. Okay. No one need to. So right. If you guys still want to do something, you need to make a motion to. Well, I, I understand to amend it. Well, I understand the chief's going to put up temporary stop sign there. Is that correct? Are we agreement with that? Unless the council opposed. No. No. We don't oppose. Craig, he can determine the best location. That's what he does for a living. We have a date. Probably when he can get you a chance to get back to my office and talk to him, and we will get to it as soon as we can do something. Okay. Well, I'd hope it would be done before this bill comes up for final passage. If it's not, then I'm going to make a motion to. It's two weeks. Yeah. So, so with, within a couple weeks. All right. Forty-six twenty. Let's move on to the next bill. Forty-six twenty. Bill number forty-six twenty, requested by Jeff Smith, sponsored by Dave Hammond, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of a grant for emergency communications equipment and amending the 2018 budget, adopted as ordinance seventeen one thirteen, by making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 Department of Emergency Communications budget in the amount of $160,947.75 for an East-West Gateway grant to build a link between the St. Louis Regional Microwave System and Missouri Statewide Interoperability Network for improved radio connectivity. Is there any comments or questions on this? <coughs> 
Hearing none, let's move on to Bill 4621. Bill number 4621, request by Ryan Graham, sponsored by Dave Hammond, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an intergovernmental agreement with the city of St. Peter's and the Darden Creek Drainage District number three for maintenance of Darden Creek. Any comments or questions? Nope. Hearing none, uh, any announcements or miscellaneous? It's Mr. You know who that is? Do we have any other announcements? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, just one announcement that for those who didn't notice and don't pay attention to the uh, business legal records. notice paper. Uh, business record. The business record. Uh, th this morning there appeared the first uh, notice. Uh, we are asking for uh, proposals of any from anyone wishing to purchase the family arena. Uh, uh, we had uh, someone express some interest. In, in doing exactly that, we explained to them that uh, that's great, but we also have to offer the public or anyone, anyone else who's interested an opportunity to uh, also uh, uh, bid on it. So we are basically asking for, for bids that be submitted by July the 20th. Is that right, Bob? Yes. Yes. Uh, by July the 20th. 3 p.m. Pardon me? 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. on July the 20th. At that point, we will uh, share with you uh, uh, the bids. Uh, we will be under no obligation to purchase uh, anything, but uh, we'll have an opportunity to see if there's a, if there's a market for the family arena, and, uh, and then uh, we will make a decision on whether that's in the best interest of the uh, people of St. Charles County to sell or to not sell. Okay? Okay, anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.